Ladies and gentlemen, hello. hello. Now a few disclaimers before we start. The title doesn't mean that I hate Resident Evil. It just means that I have not watched, played, or read any movie, game, or any sort of reading material related to Resident Evil before. Which means that I did not play the original, and I will not be comparing the remake to the original. Also, while you're watching this review, please throw out any sort of objectivity out of the window. This review is completely subjective, everything here is my own opinion. And if you want an objective review, you should probably go watch IGN or something. Not that they're objective, but uh, at least they pretend to be, you know? That being said, this game is a masterpiece! Story. I always found it understandable if the dead were rising from the graves that the police and army would just take whatever gun they're holding in their hands and empty all the bullets into the zombies' heads. But when healthy people are being infected with a virus and turning into zombies, I think it's a bit strange that the first thought of the police and the army is... They're infected. I mean, I'm pretty sure the police and army have non-lethal weapons that can stop people without killing them. But we're not here for that. We're here for Resident Evil 3 story, not the norm of zombie apocalypse stories. As far as a city overrun by zombies story goes, it's pretty decent, pretty straightforward. There are zombies, there's an armed group of people protecting some survivors in a shelter and they want to evacuate the place. And the story stays good and decent until it gets to the underground section. Even the main character finds it absurd. All of this facility underground is... is not a good idea. Especially when the only thing stopping people from entering is a lock that can be opened with a lockpick. Also, something else bothered me. Nathaniel Bart says that the rest of the vaccine is underground. The rest of the vaccine being one vial, which you have to synthesize. We need to discuss emotions or lack of emotions. For example, Don't think about it. We're gonna make a run for it. Come on, Jill. We know how this ends. No, I don't. Are we still a team? Always! Then do me a favor. Go fuck up like I do. Go! I'm sorry, Brad. And this is the last time she mentions Brad in the story. Oh, the train derailed? Mihail and everyone died? Oh, Tyrell died? Oh, oh the city got destroyed? I could have used some more emotional impact, you know? I was getting more emotional about the characters dying than the characters in the story actually were. Well anyways, next point. Weapons. And gameplay, of sorts. Weapons were very satisfying to use. The, what I like to call the feels good factor. And there was a lot of feels good in this game. The handgun was great, shotgun was great. Adding the parts to the handgun, the shotgun, that was fantastic. The grenade launcher felt great. Uh, the assault rifle. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't like when I'm aiming at something and I'm still missing bullets. It, it's just not my cup of tea. Now, the magnum, though. The magnum. Holy sh... Then the game ends. And you unlock the shop. And you buy the Samurai Edge. The Raiden. And you're like, damn. I got through hardcore with those garbage weapons and now I have... These Nightmare is gonna be easy. Except you find out very quickly that Nightmare is actually a circus. Zombies falling, zombies on fire falling, zombies falling and having a sleepover, zombies falling with creepy masks, zombies falling with creepy masks and having a sleepover. Then you manage to do a few of the challenges, achievements, whatever, and you buy the best weapon and the most fun weapon in the game, the infinite rocket launcher. That's when it goes back to survival horror. For the zombies. This thing does not make any sense. Like, I get the infinite ammo, but not be not having to reload, that's a bit much. This is what boss fights look like with the infinite launcher. Jill, is that you? Carlos? You're okay.
Anyway, you continue with the infinite launcher and then you reach the final boss. And suddenly it's no longer survival horror for the zombies. It's uh, it's actually Bloodborne. A shitty ass Bloodborne boss fight where the boss stun locks you to death if you get hit. And even if you do not get hit, it sprays acid in the most random of ways. And it hits you and you stagger and then it stun locks you to death. Oh, you press dodge? Ah, uh, too early. Oh, you pressed dodge? No, you didn't. And then you buy a book from the shop and it's back to survival horror, but for Nemesis. Also, how was Jill carrying that gun though? Characters. The supporting cast. Tyrell, Mikhail, Carlos, and Nikolai. Everyone has superb voice acting in my opinion. Tyrell and Mikhail were, I don't know, okay characters? They didn't do much. Like, they, they tried, but okay. Carlos had a good character arc. He figures out Umbrella is the bad guy and he's working for them and... Uh, there was something there, but... I don't know. They didn't do anything with it. And he was always trying to save the city, so it's not like he, he figured out that Umbrella was bad and then... He decided, oh, I have to save the city now. No, he was just he was just there to save the city in the first place. Nikolai is a very weak villain with a very weak motive. Yeah, he closes the train door and stops Mihail and Jill from escaping Nemesis. But he wasn't controlling Nemesis and he had no idea that Nemesis would infect Jill with the T-Virus, if I understood correctly. It wasn't part of his master plan. Also, speaking of his motive, he was after money. But when he got the vaccine, he decided to destroy it instead of sell it. Yeah, I understand he was working for another corporation that wanted to take Umbrella down, but wouldn't that be beneficial for the corporation he's working for? You know, getting the vaccine, saving the city, selling it to the government? I don't know, it just, his, his whole way of thinking did not make any sense. Jill Valentine though. Great character, 10 out of 10. Aside from moments of blatant out-of-character stupidity done to drive the plot forward due to bad writing such as when she decided that Nemesis cannot swim swim. or when she hopped onto the train filled with survivors completely forgetting the fact that Nemesis survived a similar explosion to the one he just suffered from. You know... Five minutes earlier? But how was she carrying that gun though? This actually takes us to the next point. Cutscenes. As I've said, great voice acting, great graphics. What's wrong with Nemesis though? Like he completely obliterates anyone aside from Jill. Oh, Mihail, oh, stab him through the chest, easy money. Oh, Tyrell, stab him through the chest, easy money. Jill, no, no, let's, let's just grab her. No need to stab. Also, this is a minor gripe, but Tyrell got impaled in the chest, right? Where, where? What happened? Something else, uh, uh, Jill's, Jill's actually invincible. She takes a rocket launcher, she falls, she falls, she falls and breaks her back, she carries a railgun and fires it, emanating enough force to break the ground, but she, she does not flinch, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this brings me to my theory. Jill Valentine is this world's supergirl, but she's actually evil, and that's why she did not use her powers to save the city, so that the city gets destroyed. Capcom, however, does not want you to know this because... This is random Capcom employee number 7. Everything you've heard is untrue and absurd, except for the fact that this game is a masterpiece. 10 out of 10. Please subscribe.